Welcome to the June 17th meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission, and I know we have a presence of a quorum, so I'll call the meeting to order. The first thing I'll do is note uh, the audio and video recording of this uh, meeting, and I'd like to note the members absent and present, starting with uh, Director Wayne Fyden. Kind of announce yourself. Dave Palmer, Director of Central Services. Ben Huntley, Director of Public Works. Alex Bullard, Transportation Engineer. Go Harder, Board of Health. Gary Hartwell, Board of Public Works. James Longenthal, Citizen and uh, uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. Russ Nicholas, Police Chief. Okay. So I believe that um, Councillor Lisa Klein, uh, Ms. Devin Bruce, and Mr. Rich Cooper are absent. Um, we'll start with uh, our public comment period, and this is a chance for members of the public to uh, speak to the commission about anything you want. Um, it's not a time to engage in, in back and forth in a dialogue. That's um, an opportunity we can set up for another time, but this is just to voice your concerns. And also, just to make sure we respect everyone's time and get everyone's comments in, we we'll try to adhere to roughly three minutes My name is Dan Ladd. I live on Prospect Street, the end at Smith. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I see your uh, that persuasion on this week. I went to the parking meeting and I voiced some concerns about six weeks ago about parking on our street. It's a residential street, and there never is parking. <coughs> zero parking uh, because of the Smith uh, proximity. I think it is closer to Smith in Kensington. I note that. And I uh, petitioned, or uh, I asked about the possibility of residential parking on that hill that comes up from Trumbull. Uh, <clears throat> if, and if not that, whether we could have the street painted for parking places because young students uh, still don't know how to park responsibly in a residential neighborhood. Uh, I was told at that meeting that I would be gotten back to, and nobody has uh, reached me since then. And so I thought I would take it, hopefully, to the next level. Again, to partition, partition, petition uh, the greater authority uh, to relieve us of congested parking in that area. Um, I have gotten a ticket uh, for double parking while I unloaded groceries in front of my residence. Yeah. Um, please, could we look at the situation and see if there's some way to help us out? Thank you very much. We actually have a sign up sheet. There is. Can I get it to you? Can we pass it back? Okay, um, the next person signed up to speak is uh, Mr. Daniel McLaughlin. McLaughlin? Hello, uh, my name is Daniel McLaughlin. I'm a resident of 46 Graves Avenue. I'm here to represent the owners and residents of 486, 48, and 50 Graves Avenue, the house that is at the end of the street there. Um, I'm here just to report to you guys, I have already reported to Ryan and to the rest of the street that on June 1st, uh, we had a drunk driver uh, enter our lot to make a turnaround, as cars often do, and uh, this driver managed to drive uh, well past the parking lot into our yard and garden and knock over a large force 50 in our yard before the car was stopped. Uh, the driver was arrested on the spot after failing for sobriety tests. Um, the reason I'm sharing this with you all is because uh, the residents of 46, 48, and 50 uh, have, have unanimously decided, along with the owners, to uh, install a gate on our property that would prevent vehicles coming down the street from making new turns in our lot, uh, primarily as an issue of personal safety. Uh, it was 
less than 15 minutes prior to the accident, my wife and her friend were in our garden and would have been seriously injured or killed by the car at that time. And so uh, we would like to make sure that something tra as tragic as that won't happen in the future. Um, the, re the other reason I want to bring it up is we are open to alternative solutions that might be more amenable to the community at large. Uh, if anyone has other ideas that uh, can provide the, an equal amount of safety, but that would be less disagreeable to the community or to our neighbors. Uh, any assistance, support in the form of ideas or anything else would be more than welcome and we would take it under consideration. Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? Or I'll move around for a bit. We should make an exception. Good question. Uh, the, the gate that you're proposing yeah. would be on city property or on uh, private property? Private property. And so what you're asking from the commission then, exactly, is? Um, ideas. That, um, if, if the city wants to work with us on an alternative solution that's more agreeable to everyone <coughs> who's going to be affected, we are open to other alternatives. Is it your feeling that the gate is not going to be effective? I believe the gate will be effective, but I also uh, presume that other individuals with community would like not to have it installed. As a courtesy, we want to be open to other ideas before we proceed with what we have thought of as the only viable solution, but we realize there might be other ideas we haven't thought of. Um, next we have uh, Mr. Jack St. James. Yes. Oh, excuse me. It's Jackie. Oh, Jackie, I couldn't read it. Pardon. Hi, um, I'm here in support of, of um, Dan and uh, Phyllis. Uh, I, I live at 50 Graves in this uh, aforementioned uh, building complex. And um, just to be a little bit more uh, clear to the members who may not have ever been down 50 Graves Avenue, down to the end of Graves Avenue. Graves Avenue is typically a fire lane. It has a, a narrow parking, parking space which is often filled by people who don't live on the street. And then people zoom down the street, presuming that it's a through street because there's a very microscopic sign at the end of the street. It's about this big. And uh, that was a sign that we petitioned and asked the city for uh, about two years ago to replace the existing sign. And the new sign is really, you know, it, it, it changed the traffic patterns very minutely. And uh, what we think we need to keep traffic off that street is very huge signs that are on both sides of the street, something like that. Um, but anyway, um, uh, this uh, accident in our garden, I was home at the time as well. And it's pretty dismaying to see, you know, someone plowing through your garden in your yard at about 40 miles an hour and just being stopped by a large tree um, prior to going into the next person's yard. So, and that is just because they really don't have, you know, people have to turn around. So if we install the gate, there will be some issues for other people turning around in the street as then it will be a dead end at the gate. So, uh, you know, uh, having lived in this for seven years, I just want to say that uh, something does need to be done, and we just can please people <laughs> please band together, think creatively in the city capacity to do so. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Okay. <laughs> um, excuse me, Hi, I'm one of the owners of Graves Avenue apartment building. I live up in Conway. So this issue has been going on for a long time, and Jackie did explain some of the problem. I don't know if all of you realize that the street, um, our parking lot backs the school. What's the name of that school? The street school. school. Yeah, so there are a lot of kids, and, and there's a, a, a sidewalk that's being installed to go through. There's a lot of foot traffic, a lot of kids go through our private park parking lot, a lot of uh, people um, pedestrians do. We're happy to have that. We want to be good um, members of the community and of Graves Avenue. Um, the problem's been ongoing. We have to work very, very hard to get that dead end sign, and it's really small. It's not, it's, you know, every truck that comes down that street turns around in our parking lot. We spend a lot of money on maintenance. There's huge potholes. We've had the signs for the tenants parking on posts knocked down twice now. Um, we have a, there's been a, I have a picture of a recycling truck 
that's backed up to the gate to get the recycling from the school. You know, every UPS truck uses it. And then there are all people that think they can go through and get annoyed when they can't, so they're driving. So it's, it's really been a very big issue. And the gay idea is really, uh, you know, the, this accident, um, the drunk driver was really what <coughs> pushed us. Um, the gate, you know, the other thing is that the street, the snow plowers, happily, I mean, I think it's a good arrangement, come down the street and push the snow and um, sort of to the back of the lot. Uh, because they have no place else to put it, the town snow plows. So, um, you know, that would be something if we do end up installing the gate that we could give them a key and that could keep happening. So we're talking about a gate that would, you know, the tenants would have a card or something that would lift automatically. Um, I do want to say that we, we haven't made this, you know, we, we have not made the final decision to install this. We're seriously looking into possibilities. It's not a, a um, fait accompli. We, we are concerned about the street and the other tenants. I mean, you know, just as we're concerned, we've held this problem for a long, long time. I think it's true that they're going to come down the street and want to turn around in Greg's driveway and be annoyed. And, you know, I, I, I don't see how that's really viable either. So, um, you know, I, I think we're just trying to lay out to you the problem, and we do, as owners, want to be good, um, good citizens and of the community. But we also feel like we need to protect our tenants, and um, you know, do what we need to do to make that a viable place for them to park and live. There's a garden there. You know, they walk there. So do the school children. So, thank you. Thank you, and I'm, I'm sort of revisiting the wisdom of the no question rule. I thought that would be a good idea, but if anyone does have questions, I think it probably would be appropriate. Um, Mr. Longfall's question was a good one last time, because this is something we want to understand. I have a question. What, what, how, can, how can we be assured of some sort of response? To, to your issue? Well, and to anybody's issue who petitions you for a um, questionable situation. Well, um, in your case, uh, there is actually a, an established procedure for requesting resident-only parking. To my knowledge, there's only one uh, street in the city that uses it, um, which is Kensington, right? Um, and so there's a procedure there, and you and I can talk about that. How about for getting painted lines? I honestly don't know the procedure for getting uh, painted lines. It's a case-by-case -case basis. It's something you have to demonstrate support from the neighborhood and so on. So it's. Um, case by case. And, but this is I mean, the first step. And in the case of Graves Avenue, um, I specifically added it to the agenda tonight because I think it is important for us to talk about. But I understand your frustration. And you and I will talk by phone. So, uh, any, any questions about Ms. Ms. Jeswald's comments? Or, uh, just curious about the there's a dead end street sign or something <coughs> like that. Is it's that, is pretty that, small. And is it, is it at the beginning of the street? Yes. So it's off of Market Street? Yes. We've put a um, tenant parking only sign, I don't know if it says private property, you know, on the gate to the, to the entrance of our parking lot. But we haven't put anything that says the don't turn around. Is your parking lot toward the end of the street? It is at the very end. And okay. The street dead ends in our parking lot. It's on the left hand side here. Okay. And it, there is where the city plows snow, that backs up onto the school property? That's yes. correct. So if you went through the gate you're talking about, you'd be on school property? No. I guess I'm on, No, okay. Um, what happens is... I've been at the end of the street. Yeah. So if you go to the end of the street, there's a very large parking lot with a garden. It's really straight ahead. Yes. Um, if you keep going straight ahead through our parking lot, there's a gate that is the school property okay. gate. So we've got maybe... 50, 60 feet, you say, would you say, a parking lot that, bef you know, that's private property before you hit the gate to the school. So the gate that I'm talking about, looking at the buying, is at the start of the parking lot, the entrance to our parking lot. And the street sign is out. At Market, Market Street, yeah. and very small. Yeah. Yeah? It's a very small sign, it's only on one side of the street. Yes, yes. It's probably more visible coming from one direction than the other. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Next we have Mr. Gregory Jones. Uh, so I also uh, reside on the Avenue, actually on the same side of the street as Phyllis um, and I've lived there a long time. Um, last time there was a temporary fence put up. Can you speak a little louder, Greg? And... I'm sorry, a little tired. Um, last time there was a temporary fence put up, it caused chaos on the street. Um, there are only 90 degree angles, very, very um, hard angles for folks who actually live on the street. Parking is on the right side of the street. And so it, it created a cascading people backing into folks uh, doors and the front panels and rear panels on the street. Um, it didn't last long. It, it just the tenants decided to do it. But I, I came today um, specifically to talk about um, the signage. And because of the construction further down market onto North Street and folks cutting through, um, and in the last four or five years, there's been a lot of traffic backing up on Market Street. And so there's kind of the natural instinct to take that left hand turn, thinking that you can get up and back out without having to deal with the light that's in front of you. Um, and that's a, kind of a newer occurrence. It's happened more often in the last, say, three or four years because of the construction and because of, you know, folks discovering that as a, as a way through. So Market Street has gotten um, more and more busy and it's affected us in that way. When we were dealing with uh, the city with the proposed uh, bicycle path, um, I, I spoke a couple times to city council. Um, mostly about the added impact of the uh, zoning changes and how much uh, zoning changes and the amount of businesses that are now starting to proliferate down Market Street really affects our street. And you know, it's hard to go and speak to city officials, officials who have huge problems to deal with. We talk about our little street all the time. So it's, it's, it's not a comforting thing to come to speak to city council. But, I think, in all honesty, a few options could we could try, and I think it would really um, hasten a lot of those types of problems with people just thinking that Graves Avenue is a through street and just not knowing it. Second problem we have is that once people do make that turn and they get to the head of the street, they zoom down the street. They just they got it down the street, and you know it's like frustration. Driving. You know, you can see them get to the end. They can't see the end as they pull onto the street. We're sitting on our porches. You can watch them come up. They get to the head of the street and they go, I can't get through. They whip around and head back down the street. So the residents um, not only have to deal with uh, commercial traffic, which is purposeful. People know that they're, you know, UPS now backs down the street. They don't turn around. Or around it. But FedEx. Ground is a privately owned subsidiary. Those folks just are trying to do their thing. It's a cable truck. They do the same thing. So the city has a, a right of way um, for plowing, for a lot of uh, city usage, obviously fire department, things like that. Um, I, would, I would also like to say that it would be wonderful if we could figure out a way to help to offset some of the costs that the, the owners of 50 um, Graves Avenue have to pay just to maintain um, that end of that lot. Even if it's just bringing the heavy equipment up there and raking it once a year, it would, it would go over big. It would be huge. Um, and, you know, these are pre-existing conditions. This has been this way for a really long time, but the city is kind of growing quickly. So I'll just end by saying uh, signage would be huge. Um, speed bump, I don't know, you know, talk about it. Um, something like you were suggesting on the ground, um, if people did turn in, maybe they could make that left behind Joe's Pizza and not make it all the way down the street. All of those things would be helpful, but um, something really does need to happen. And the, and the block would be very supportive of 
even you know asking residents to chip in financially to pay for these signs if that was something that uh, would be allowed. Okay. Just a quick quick question for you. Yeah. Um, are there other signs besides a dead end sign in front of the scene that you envision specifically? Well, the city has put up signs that have been stolen. <laughs> so I mean, we've you know, it's not again, it's not because people are you know uh, deaf to this. This is this has been a reoccurring dead end Graves Avenue. You know, it's kind of sexy and some you know, <laughs> you know whatever. But I think that there really could be a a a, a, a bright a bright fluorescent green yellow sign, especially coming down Market, actually in both directions, that would really 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 help. And um, you know. Having, having seen the city go through its process of, of just trying to keep the budget for streets, it's hard to come up and, and bellyate. But you know, if we can be proactive and be helpful, we'd like to do that. No skull and crossbones, pirate flag. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably get stolen <laughs> first night. <laughs> well, that draw them in. Yeah, that would draw them in. Any other questions for Mr. Jones? Okay. I'm just wondering, are there any other signs that are in the neighborhood that Dead end, no through, not a through street. You know, say it three different ways. Not a through street, no turnaround. You know, I don't know whether if you can't ban trucks from the street, can you? <laughs> I mean, wow. I guess UPS has to come down there, but those guys. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Those are things that we'll take up when we reach the discussion section, and the commission will discuss these those ideas. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, is there yeah. any other public comment? I see someone else is walking in. I'd put pressure on you, but you can certainly. Nope. Tuesday market space, right? That's part of this. 
we, we would like to utilize the Tuesday market space this year. Um, and I'm actually, I'm actually doing this as, as a <coughs> precursor for the uh, Northampton Arts Council as well. They're looking today, are looking to do what they're calling a denim and vinyl sales, and it's ultimately a vintage clothing and vinyl record sale. Um, and discussing with it, with them uh, the opportunity to um, have a multiple group, group of people at the same time would be, be that would be advantageous for both of our, our events. Um, and again, I'm not sure if this is the, the council to discuss that with or not. But, uh, do you want to put that out there? The specific recommendation of what you're looking for is the closure of the line. That's my first, my first and foremost purpose, yes. We're happy to see you again. Thanks. Excited to come back. What, can I just ask quickly, um, the attendance to the Jazz Fest, how, what, are the, what are the trends, what are the numbers in the past few years? Uh, we have, uh, last year was definitively our, our, our best year. Unfortunately, our first year uh, was a little bit of a washout. You know, second year did grow. We figured we were estimating around 3,000. Last year was my my first, my personally my first year involved with it, uh, being with McLaren's. We took care of the beer tent. I'd say throughout the entire day, we were well over 4,000 people in attendance. Um, it was a fantastic event, and with the artists that we have and new collaborations we have and sponsorships and stuff like that, I would almost expect to see the 6,000 number come pretty close. And especially if we are able to partnership with the, with the Arts Council and have all section. Great, thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Kennedy? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so one of us could make a motion to uh, guess the words and use to make it just recommend that the closure is okay with us. What? Are you okay with us including the Tuesday market area as well just in case that we're going to turn it? I suppose if that's appropriate, although I mean, what have we done? That I'd like to do what we've done in the past. It's not the past. Not the past. Is, that, is that in fact under our purview? I'm not sure. You know, it's all through the city. We don't specifically say what right. we, it was bought for parking and then that was parked at its park. So it's not formally a park. It's part of the system. I, I imagine it, it might be okay with us. <laughs> right. Well, I'm happy to hear any motion. That, do you want to make that motion for both areas? Sure. And we'll propose that the primary parking lot and the area between the garage and the lines. Okay. So I'll just by and make some motions. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, the week is it? Friday. 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 Good. Any further discussion? Any recommendation? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Um, the next item is um, you're, you're, you're Sarah Banker. All right. <laughs> um, I'd like to skip the number 10 um, and let um, Mr. Biden introduce the appointment of Sarah Banker to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee. So Sarah's been coming to Bike and Ped for a few months now. Years. Um, a few years now. Years. Uh, if I can head at a meeting last month voting nationally, I recommend that she went on good, good both in right hand present and in her day job. She works in public health. She's working with the city for helping him. Good luck to have her. Ms. Banker, is there anything you'd like to say? Or just no, I'm just it? happy. I'm just here to say hi and to experience the Transportation and Parking Commission. Hi. So. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Is there, are there any questions with this bank? I see her, her resume is, is in here and an informational flyer about Healthy Hampshire, which is useful for us to consider. But any questions? No, I just want to speak uh, in strong support of uh, Sarah's point. Okay, and uh, I'd like to thank you too for being willing to serve on the committee. You'd be a great asset, if in fact you are appointed to the state. So is there a uh, is there a motion to to approve the appointment of Sarah Banker? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. Congratulations. Thank you for saying hi. Thank you. Thank you for your help here in the chat this week. Yeah, would you like to do a victory lap? Well, I, I would encourage you to read 
the Healthy Hampshire Who We Are statement. Does everyone did everyone get that in their packet? Yes. Yeah. So that's my day job. I, I am a Northampton resident, but I also uh, staff um, an initiative that is currently um, Northampton, Amherst, Belter Town, and Williamsburg, and we work on increasing access um, to healthy food and opportunities for physical activity at the policy and system level. So most of my work in Northampton has actually been supporting the Bike and Pet Subcommittee, working directly with Wayne Fiden on a couple projects in Northampton. So. Okay, and you said that is a project of the Hampshire Council. Um, currently, the grant that is funding this uh, comes through the Council of Governments. In the future, the grant, you know, we could be funded through a variety of mechanisms because it's, right now, it functions as a, a coalition of mostly public health and planning directors from the four communities. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you again. Um, so now we can move back into to regular order here. And go to number seven, reports from committees. Let's start with the parking committee. And this is my mom's on here, so. Yeah. Can I email this to the RFP when you paper copies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, that it has suspicious you are printing it. So, the parking commission's been talking about sort of having a clear set of principles on how the parking systems manage. Um, sort of, you know, big 10,000 foot high principles. So they, they're worried that when we look at parking, we certainly, it was a risk to us making ad hoc decisions. And so before we, before they focus on specific recommendations to this body on specific actions, they wanted to propose parking principles and come through you all and see if this makes sense. Um, so let me just sort of walk you through these. I'm not going to go drill down, but just sort of walk through generally. Um, the first was sort of uh, obviously recognizing there's a lot of different users. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume you've read this, but if you want to go more detail, I'm happy to. But the idea is being, they're trying to be careful and saying, sign before transportation and parking and before the parking subcommittee, it sounds like the users are at each other's throats. And they just sort of thought it was useful to think about what are all the users, what are their needs, how can we try to meet as many users as possible. So what's here is just a summary of what seems like everybody's needs there um, and suggesting how we can start leading the work together. Um, the second, which is probably in some ways the most important, is just thinking about the whole system as a system so we're not making decisions individually. Um, it all ties together so that you know, the more friendly the traffic signal that Ned's working on to cross King and Pleasant, the easier it is for someone parking on one side King and Pleasant to get to the other side. So we can't just look at parking divorce from how friendly is the city for walking and those kinds of issues. Um, uh, it might be going to add lots of other things like that in terms of what our rates are. We, we raise the rates one place, we send to this one. Um, the third, this is the one where I think all people on, this, on the committee, including me, but with one dissent, agreed, which was sort of, we should really think about where the place, we should figure out where we want to get to the parking system and make sure that our parking fees reflect that. So if we're trying to get more vacancies on Main Street so that there's um, not as much people driving around looking for a parking spot, we should be increasing that. Rate. If we have a round half parking lot, which is probably our least busy parking lot, we should be having lower rates there. So we use the rates to encourage people here. And this sort of fits back to the user's piece, which is downtown shoppers people who go out down here and don't live down here um, are the ones for whom the parking spot in front of business is most valuable. The figure nationwide is a parking spot in front of business brings about hundred thousand dollars a year of business. So th those people are the people who shop are the ones who are most sensitive to the spot the spot being available um, but are most flexible in terms of rate. So you know a shopper can deal with a higher rate. Um, Workers and downtown residents are less, sen less sensitive to distance, they go on to walk more distance, but they're more sensitive to parking rates. I'm sort of thinking about And you, you all had Nelson Nygaard, or uh, Jason Schreiber from Nelson Nygaard in a presentation six months ago. And he talked about that. In some cities, they actually have a very sophisticated system where it keeps track, meters, the, the parking spots talk to each other. 
and when, when the vacancy rate gets really low, it automatically raises the rates. When the vacancy rates get really low, um, it automatically lowers the rates. Um, I don't think we're going to do that. I say that. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I don't think we can do that sort of system, but thinking about you know what works. We, we had a camera for City Hall. That one of the members had set up a time lapse photography, and so you could look at Main Street over the course of a week and see very easily sort of what are the spots where vacancy rates um, are really hot, with a lot of empty spots, um, and what are the times where vacancy rates are really low, and it's really hard to find the spot. So thinking about that kind of analysis, of what are we charging? And then, um, I, and also thinking about parking uh, tickets in that same piece. So parking tickets are inevitable for some things, but if people don't seem to complain that much about higher parking rates, so they complain a lot about a parking ticket. I mean, it's a ticket only for two times. So trying to get how we minimize the parking tickets um, into a system that both informs people enough and rates enough. And that fits the last one, which is just making sure the system is more user friendly and more rational. Again, Nelson Nygaard talked about you know, why do we have so many places we limit how many hours people can stop to park in the spot, um, and how can we reduce the rules. So that's for really the overview. You know, if, if you all have read this and wanted to act, that would be great. But we're not in a desperate hurry, so if you want to start introduce now and want to consider it in your team, that's fine. Any, any questions? Sure. Um, there's a lot in here that I agree with, especially the, uh, uh, the uh, dynamic pricing to reflect the market. And um, I really think we should explore that more than we have. Uh, and I, um, I've read a lot by Donald Shoup, and I'm glad to be quoted here, and I, I agree with that philosophy very much. Uh, one specific question I have about it, I have a more general question, but that's the specific question is, um, have you on the parking committee considered uh, you know, if and when you are to uh, raise rates so that uh, you adjust the vacancy, uh, or the, let's say the, the, the opposite of vacancy, the, um, okay. occupancy, thank you, to say 90% or 85% or whatever you think the best target is so that there's you know, 10 percent or 50 percent vacant, so that anybody can find the spot easily. That's the goal. If you find what that rate is, that's probably going to be higher than it is today. Now the rates are low enough that the occupancy rates almost 100 uh, percent almost all the time during the daytime on the street, right? So if you do that, starting at 11 o'clock. Starting at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so during those peak hours, anyway, if you do that, uh, where does that money go? And shoot. As Donald Shoup has often advocated that at least some portion, some significant portion of that, uh, that extra revenue go directly back to the business owners uh, in the form of streetscape improvements, um, benches, flower boxes, you know, uh, repairing broken sidewalks. For us it could be uh, uh, also bike racks, bike lanes, uh, crosswalks, things that will help make the, the downtown, wherever the that money is being charged even more attractive. And that will benefit those shop owners directly, who otherwise may be skeptical that raising the rates is a good idea. So I think some discussion about that. And it's certainly raising rates is not intended to be revenue and enhancement for intended for management purposes. I think a couple of things. One is I think it's a recognition that if the system is redone according to these principles, there'd probably be fewer tickets. Um, and the tickets go to general revenue. So so an assumption of paying rates, the city shouldn't be making money to deal, but it should be held harmless, if you will. So if we're dropping $100,000 in tickets, then it may well be $100,000 in parking media revenue to go to the general fund to offset that, that drop. Um, and then second, and David talked about this much more than I can, but I think there's a recognition that there may be opportunities for some more technology investments. And so some of the extra funds should be going towards that. So they had a brief discussion about that beyond that. that so we wanted to, to stop at this and all the principles we put that right now. Just to your point, I mean, it's, it's a nice thing to give back, but the parking receipts revenue that we collect now, pay for nine police officers, three of which are dedicated downtown to the downtown merchants. So they do get a benefit. The receipts, the ticket revenue was dropped because we're more efficient at managing our system at a higher rate. I'd be worried about the loss of that money. 
I, I didn't say there was not a benefit from the, from the revenue now. I totally recognize that. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm asking about uh, a, a delta, a change. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I personally think it's Main Street study of the camera. Because I, I sit in my office in Six Hundred Street with eight or nine spaces out there. They probably do more. This is where it's sort of the camera's on the back for a couple of weeks. Yeah. But I think it's part of the point. It's sort of we had these rates, sometimes the rates, a very short distance, maybe a big difference on it. So, yeah. so even along Main Street, you get weight, you know, maybe it's changed now with the Greek restaurant. But when that's up like to Main Street, there's more vacancy than close yeah. to the rate. And then real, real life here, too, is higher rates downtown on Main Street. As good as parking does, there's meter feeders for them working the salons all day long. They go out and take slips up and throw up their three friends' cars. And that's just a long term route, but it's really difficult to drag unless it's really expensive enough to park there. And the workers, even though it says they're more likely, they, a lot of them, literally stuff the meter on there. So they were high enough that they discourage that movement out. And that's exactly right. Basic core principles, just how they get applied. Anybody else? Okay. I also wanted to, uh, I wanted to say, uh, what I would like to see added to these principles is a greater recognition of the larger transportation system that's embedded in, and the effect on everything else. And Another thing that Donald Trump talks about a lot is the tremendous effect uh, that uh, providing lots of parking has on people's decision to drive rather than to take other uh, means of transportation. And if all we made was parking lots uh, and parking spaces, then all we would get would be people driving those parking spaces. And uh, conversely, if all we made was um, uh, uh, crosswalks and sidewalks everywhere and no cars were allowed, everybody would have to walk. So is that going to happen? No. But, Right now, it's stacked heavily in favor of driving. And, uh, it's been that way for a long time. And we've had many, many discussions in here about uh, the effects of uh, built environments on people's decisions to, uh, to choose one mode of transportation over another. And parking is one of those main uh, impact points. So I think that should appear in the principles a little bit more. It, it appears uh, on page two and, and section two. At the end, as a key component of transportation, parking is more than car storage. Parking is part of the system that's influenced by and has influenced on forces as varied as festivals, business, safety, and housing. But that's pretty pretty minimal. And I felt at the beginning here where it says, in an ideal system, drivers find spaces easily and nearly every space is filled. That sounds to me as a, a goal of the parking committee, as the parking committee sees it, is to provide lots of parking. I think that's uh, what the parking committee's mission is or should be. So I, I think it should be uh, more explicit that, uh, that we're trying to balance this against all the other needs, especially uh, you know, the environmental and the sustainable Northampton. A lot of it is about reducing single occupancy vehicles. And that doesn't happen by making parking super easy. Any other comments? Wait, are you looking ultimately for this committee to endorse what is written here? Um, I might suggest that we dedicate a little bit more time to it and take it out next meeting. Maybe we can go and come back with uh, homework assignments of specific textual amendments to offer. And we can debate each amendment in this commission. This is a suggestion. But, for example, your concerns, you think that would be Sure, I'd be happy to myself. Okay, I certainly admit I need to look at this more closely. Okay. If there's something else for today, it might be good if someone wants to move to the table at the next meeting. Table for further discussion, so that's fine. Okay, sure. Next motion, is there a second? Second. Mr. Plan, second, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Great, thank you. And, and Wayne, thank you for, to you and for the, uh, the Department Committee for doing this, because this is, 
I think in the end it was very valuable. So it takes care of that. And um, do you want to talk about the, the bike and fit? Yeah, maybe James. Okay. James, you want me to point first from now on? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, we met this morning and uh, we discussed uh, Let's see, among other things, uh, continuing discussion about uh, the extension of the rail trail in Leeds. Uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, residents there uh, who had some uh, questions specifically about uh, the increase in trash and the human waste that was uh, appearing on the trail side. Uh, we, uh, we had some discussion about the relative balance of the uh, bike bed committee's attention on off-road rail trails versus uh, on-road uh, bike lanes versus uh, pedestrian accommodation. Uh, we had uh, the usual uh, updates on the, the many projects going on around town, including uh, uh, connection of all the rail trails and what will be uh, not a tunnel but an underpass under the railroad. I call it a tunnel because that results in all kinds of crazy. <laughs> so it's based on an underpass. Um, uh, design and installation of uh, biomarkers in, on the Northampton sections of the rail trail, uh, which will reflect the much larger system, including uh, the fact that Northampton is the, uh, the zero point for, um, for uh, counting miles uh, all the way across the Nerwatic through Hadley, Amherst, Belgertown and potentially all the way south to New Haven as well on the Manning Rail Trail, although they may not think so. They may start at zero in New Haven, so they're recording that something in the future. But uh, talked about the uh, continuing need for maintenance of the rail trails, especially uh, brush growing up around the edges. Uh, we have, as you probably know, a new system uh, that's an adopted trail system where uh, businesses and, uh, and individuals are are invited to step up and adopt a section that they will maintain. And uh, so far, it's been pretty successful. A number of uh, individuals and institutions have, have stepped up uh, to do so, including, uh, uh, not to list them all, but anyway, it's uh, what's the percentage of the, the trails that are now? Um, about 80%. About 80%. We also talked about the, uh, the ongoing survey being led by Piney Valley Planning Commission uh, uh, in coordination with uh, Northampton, Amherst, Leo, and five colleges in Springfield to, uh, to look again after uh, five years since the last study, the possibility of introducing the bike share system, which would be like the hubway system in Boston or city bikes in New York. What, what's the status of that discussion? Uh, it's at an information gathering phase. And, uh, things that, you know, that the landscape has changed a lot in the last five years. Many, many cities across the country have started five years since then. And so we have much more experience on which to draw. Any questions on this? Um, during our last commission meeting, there were a lot of people who came and, and well, a lot of people who came and talked about um, and I, I don't know what section I'll have, but who was in Leeds? Um, it's a question whether we're going to use hot mix asphalt or gravel. Or is, is that still being discussed? Did that come up in your committee? It did, yes. The, um, the bike head committee, uh, quite some months ago, weighed in with the recommendation that it should be asphalt uh, because it provides for more efficient travel by bike and because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more durable and maintainable. Um, and the DVW supports that. Uh, so we support that. And since then, there's been a, a, you know, quite a, a diversity of opinions expressed and after, you, after our recommendation. And uh, you know, our recommendation is only a recommendation. We don't make a decision. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Anything else on this? Is there anything to bring about the transit committee? So the committee doesn't basically exist because right. in the form, just Two updates you all know, PBTA at their last meeting did approve the new changes for, for PBTA, which would be slightly more service in existing routes, and 
then a, a new cross-town route to, goes by the uh, survival center and, and River Mountain Market. Um, they also approved a longer-term plan, contingent on funding that may never happen, sort of thinking about how to, you know, if we had more money, what are the other thing improvements in the system? And the top priority is thinking about the bus from it's a Route 9 bus from Smith College to UMass and making that, um, you know, a, a much better service. Um, so it's, uh, but that may not go anywhere. But at least they sort of look at that and, and we've been having some discussions internally about is the academy use the best spot for all the buses to come together for the whole point. And then, they have so, and then uh, tomorrow night, um, so the, your transit subcommittee doesn't have a form, there's a separate mayor's advisory committee on the rail improvements, and they are meeting tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Um, Tim Darty from the state's coming out to brief everyone where we are with where we all back. <coughs> and with the, the new Crosstown bus, my understanding is it was amended at the last minute to be hourly, as opposed to every two hours, which is positive. Any discussion on this? Yeah, question. What did you say the, the main improvement could or would be up for the uh, Smith to UMass bus? What, what's under consideration? Well, so there's no money for this. But think about how do you make it to be really a, a, a different kind of system? You know, is this a system where you have a raised platform ahead of time and you get into the bus where you already are at the level of the bus and paint ahead of time make it faster? Are we giving it um, dedicated lanes through Hadley? Um, I'll be switching the bus stop. The bus stops so the buses can stay in their lane and not have to move to the right shoulder. So there's some variation. Is this sort of bus rapid transit? It might be bus rapid transit light. I don't think it's going to be what Pittsburgh has, which they to have. It's true or dead. It might be. You know, right now, Ned was involved with the effort to add transit on priority for the buses. So that's been completed. So right now, we're really basically buses with a tiny couple of tiny components from bus rapid transit. We have more components. I don't think anyone's talking about a true BRT stop. Good. Any other discussion? We'll move on to the DPW updates. Uh, the past month, we, uh, we overlaid the Woodlawn Road. So finally, it has a new payment. Uh, Crack ceiling contract. Uh, right now we start in, uh, we schedule um, make a scheduling when we can start uh, crack ceiling. Um, roads already been swept, so right now pretty much all depends on the con contractor and uh, weather. Chip seal, uh, rubberized chip seal on the Barrett uh, Barrett Street is um, so it was bit opening. Two weeks ago, we have a low bitter all state all state asphalt. Right now, we're waiting for signatures, and hopefully next month or so, project will start. And payment contract bid opening tomorrow. That's a big day for us. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds exciting. So you get the comments. Thank you very much for that update. Um, <coughs> so let's move to um, the one ordinance we have, um, amending section 312-102, parking prohibited at all times on Crescent Street. This is recommended by Councilor Specter and Department of Public Works. I don't see Councilor Specter, so maybe DPW could explain this ordinance to us. It was actually, at first, was recommended by DPW. Oh, and uh, uh, I did uh, talk to Councillor uh, Specter, and he agrees with us and he's supporting this uh, addition to this ordinance. And the reason why we're doing this is, uh, is a safety issue on that street. Uh, what we have right now, we have um, the street is too narrow, and by ordinance, you can't park 20 feet from intersection. Then we have a one park, uh, one parking space. Then we have uh, fire, uh, fire hydrant, and then we have a driveway. 
So pretty much a car is going to park in that parking space. It blocks pretty much half of the street. And if, if we have another car on this, um, uh, stopping, stopping on the in intersection, we're blocking the whole width of the street. So the distance 84 feet, that's um, 20 feet from intersection plus parking space plus 20 feet uh, both ways from the hydrant and the driveway plus 3 feet uh, from the edge of the driveway. So this eliminates our excuse me, Mr. Harvard. I'll finish here. Uh, that's all. <laughs> it sounds very much like a request we made the first thing. Which, uh, this, this is at the corner of the brown of the present. Because there, there is presence for that one house of park in that area between the stop sign and the driveway of the team. That <coughs> first thing. Almost caused an accident because I was coming up around Hill making the left, and because those cars parked there, the people headed towards uh, Crescent Street, uh, Round Hill from Crescent Street, are forced out to almost the middle of the road. And when I made a turn, and as it happens, this person wasn't going to make a stop, they were going to coast through it. Came very close to being an accident because they were out in the middle of the road. And recently, uh, I've noticed that these residents also are parking motorcycle there, right at the stop sign. It's it's really very dangerous. And I I made a request through the through the uh, system online system, and it says it's on their way. Is this this is connected to that? Yeah, it's actually yeah. Is that fine? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was recommended uh, first by Richard, uh, Rich Bersoletti. He asked me to look into it. That probably came from my request. Oh. I mean, I noticed, I've noticed that uh, somebody came out there and, and marked curving mm -hmm. the distances, but nothing has happened. Well, I would entertain the motion to rename this ordinance to William Harkins. Ah, no, 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 no. Safety Act. Citizen. <laughs> Citizen. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for your advocacy. And sort of works. Any other question? My only question is just to be clear it, it removes one part of the space. Yes. The rest is just. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Okay. Chief, can make some motion? And and to Wayne. Okay. Mr. Wayne, second. Is all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. So that gets a positive recommendation. I won't circle back to Mr. We'll not circle back. I mean, I don't think we need to put our name on it. I think we simply won't turn it back from council. That stands to me. You don't put our name on it anyway? No, no. <laughs> it's it's either way. Okay. I'll need for it. Okay, yeah, yeah, you received our positive recommendation, so we should go with that. And this, did this come to us first, or was it referred out of the Well, it's, it's originating here, technically. Refer that it does, so go to yeah. council, then not the yeah. ordinance, and oh, back up. Yeah, well, they it's come on council here. All right, yeah. yeah. This should be good. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're on to some discussion items. Um, quick one, I don't know how quick it is, but um, when, when we were... When we considered the proposal that um, Mr. Biden brought to eliminate a couple of parking spaces on State Street um, to improve traffic flow at the intersection of State and Main and, and Elm, a um, question arose in the City Council meeting, can we do anything to improve the actual timing of the, of the lights at that, at that intersection? Um, I'm hard pressed to describe exactly what's wrong with the timing, but I think everyone has their own experience. And so that's the question I'd just like to pose, I guess, to DPW first. Um, have you thought about that? Or? Uh, I've been there last week uh, during rush hour. Honestly, I did not notice any big issues. Uh, I mean, so improve it, that's pretty much adding time for one street. That's mean taking time from another one. And I see currently how it's going to help. 
I mean, in the future, we're planning to redo this intersection. And that might be a good idea for future. Isn't it the case if you're coming off the state and you want to get onto West Street, you can kind of get locked up there in the middle, waiting for that West Street to turn? And that kind of creates a back a backlog on State Street. So can those two lights be synchronized in some way? They're all synchronized. Are they not? I just see people kind of just leave State Street and then kind of they're kind of marooned in the center waiting for West Street to turn. And if or I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right now, waiting to turn them. Okay. Or they're waiting to turn up West Street. They're waiting to turn up West Street. And the light's already green. And West Street's already on a maximum delay up there to be on the green right now. I think it's 25 seconds. Okay. So it's given the maximum to turn onto West Street. So it's that probably nice. seeing cars coming down Elm blocking the intersection. You know we have a sign that says do not block the intersection. And then you have the people coming up from New South Street jumping the light at the very end, going through the yellow, and clogging up the tail end of that intersection too. Because they're basically they're going through almost at a red light for the intersection. Right. Uh, also, sorry. also what uh, possible is um, for uh, pedestrians. We have the, the beacons flashing the youthful pedestrian, so if pedestrian the car has to wait. Can I just ask tangentially, what's the, what's the process for no right on red sign? Because that also came up in the context of this discussion about this intersection for pedestrians uh, who are at state trying to cross. Hmm? No right on red sign across Maine or Elm. Yes. Which turning movie are you looking at? The intersection. Same one. Same one, State Street, Main Street, Elm Street. So crossing from the corner uh, where St. Mary's is to the corner where the old school is. Exactly. So one one thought came up in, in the council: could you have a no turn on red uh, sign there because we're we're creating this new lane to encourage people to turn on green and get more people through that light? But the concern was, will it have a, an impact on pedestrian safety? Um, and I so I would ask the question: if it's possible to have a no turn on red. Yeah. We do over two parking spaces to create a more even flow. People still have to stop at the street and cross There is no crosswalk. There is no crosswalk going across the old South Street. No, it's the rust state. No turn on the rust state now. Not to, right. 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 Ah, right. Church. Not to the school. So from St. Mary's to, to Edwards. Well, that's the intersection that Nelson and I got spent some time on. It's definitely, I'd say, one of the most difficult intersections to get all those things to. It's really five streets that come in. Okay. Just West Street. Actually, technically, even West Street, the last, what everybody thinks of as Elm Street, isn't that West Street? From the intersection of West Street to State and South, isn't that also West Street? And Elm Street starts above the left turn onto West Street. I believe you're right. Yeah. Because the Baptist Church has a West Street address, if I remember right. I don't think there's a Our Main Street address. Yeah. Personally, I don't think there is a, a thing you could jigger to make it better. No. Right now. I think it's a, a, a total gut renovation, is what I think it is. You want to save time from State to West, you go up that bridge. Hey, don't give away your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you're, it's not fair. You have, you know, the lights and everything. That's without lights. <laughs> you, you know all the well, shortcuts around the bundle. I, I use a bicycle. <laughs> I can use sidewalks. Yeah. And right. In terms of the strongest advocate for making pedestrian areas safer, I don't see the problem of that kind of cars turn right on State Street. Even though it's really subtle because State Street's going uphill a little bit, I think cars are going to slow up because they are yielding pedestrians. Where I see a problem in intersection is cars turn right into the South Street because they're coming down you know, the <coughs> because they're coming down the hill fast. I think those are the cars who don't feel the best for it. But I don't see that problem in this case. Okay. Full disclosure, I tend to agree with you because this this came up in, in the council and I thought it was appropriate that we at least raise it for discussion. Um, 
I'm satisfied with that. Any other comments on this? Nope. Thank you very much. So here's something. Um, you can have fun with this one, too. Near Bridge Street School, um, there are two stop signs. One is on Union Street, and the other is on Parsons Street, coming from Bridge towards Union. Um, Parsons Street then makes a sharp right. So if you're going that direction, it continues down to the next Chalkboard. Oh, you want me to draw a picture for it? Um, would that be helpful? Here, I've got the map right here. Right. And you want to, I know you like drawing on the chalkboard. <laughs> I'll just erase this how to conduct a meeting. <laughs> I should have left that part up, I guess, for me. So here's a uh, bridge. This, this is Bridge Street School, and this is Union. Uh, this is Parsons. The stop signs are stop signs here, and stop sign is here. You face a stop sign coming this way in Parsons, you face it coming this way in Union. You're not face it coming this way in Parsons. Um, so, you know, several members of the Bridge Street School community used to call it that from, uh, from staff to parents have, have asked me about this from time to time and say, why don't we have a three way stop there? And as we think about increased usage of Lambert Park and Bridge Street School, if there were innovations there, I think it's a legitimate question and legitimate to suppose that there might be increased usage of the park and increased pedestrian travel there. So my question I wanted to raise today is, is um, should we not have three stops in this? Does it make the warrants? Is the question to be asked? Does it make warrants to qualify for a multi-way stop? Okay. How do we determine? Can you review that quickly? Yeah. I can't. Uh, it's, uh, I, think, I think I believe it's, you should have so many accidents for the other number. I already checked that as does it need warrant for accidents. Uh, also, uh, traffic, if it's the uh, same amount of vehicles, uh, all directions, and uh, the amount, I think, should be more than 5,000 vehicles per day. It doesn't need that warrant. So, as far as I know, it doesn't need any warrant or always stops. I bet you if you researched it, the other two sides would be either. Because <laughs> those were put up years ago to facilitate the kids' process. Okay. Before you even get to your question, I'm trying to understand the stop sign of Parsons. I mean, at least it's drawn on the mid block stop sign. It's pretty well. It's straight to the bus stop. Parsons Street is also a mile. Okay. Is Parsons, it before you get to that intersection. Parsons Street used to go in front of the school all the way up to Route 9. Yeah, yeah. And that was altered, I don't know how many years ago, many, many moons ago. And that was the new way they put it in, front of Bridge Road. So I'd be interested in seeing what these warrants are that would have to be met, and then the data you found, mm -hmm. um, whichever ones you want to examine, if that were possible to. Not today. No, no, I'm just trying to get that every uh, But just, and I think it would be helpful, it's really helpful to me, but... Do you have a time frame that you want that information in the process? Sorry? Do you have a time frame you want that information? Well, I, you know, the parents, I think, have given me a timeline of, you know, yesterday. But no. Um, by, the next, by the next meeting, if possible. I know you're very busy. Okay. Just so you know, Okay. Uh, we've got summer break coming up now, so this school will be 99% reduced activity in traffic levels. We do that in the summer. We'll kind of Absolutely. Play with this a little bit. It just seems conceptually that three stop signs seem to make sense. It's not possible for some reason, it's not possible. So. Okay. Well, I'd appreciate it if you would bring that to the next meeting. Okay. Any other comments on this? Yes. Is there uh, 
is there ongoing discussion about the circulation uh, uh, pickup, uh, drop off, pedestrians, bicycles, kids, etc., during discussion of Blackbird Park? Redo? Or is that just the park? Well, I know the, the park. Oh. If I remember right, about four or five years ago, that was part of the Bridge Street School Capital Improvement Program. The buses and rerouting and turnarounds and so on. And I don't know if the study was ever done or not. Berkshire Design started the process. They went as far as doing traffic counts through the neighborhood and vehicle pickups and drop offs at the intersection there at Parsons in Union where the buses stopped. At that point, there was also a strategic planning study being done of possibly closing one of the four elementary schools. And once Berkshire Design finished the traffic count, that was the end of the project, project rather, because there was a lot of uncertainty about this bridge was at the top of the list as a potential school to close. That's as far as it went. It must just done a little bit more, though, because we're in the process of transferring ownership of Lampern Park from DPW to the Recreation Department to make it eligible for this $100,000 grant. And we're making sure we don't transfer the lane you might someday want for an expanded bus loop just in case to put the option open. And Berkshire, who's our surveyor, has some sort of preliminary plan that we're using as a basis for what not transfer. I don't know how good it is, but that's where we're going. Is that something we could add to next month's agenda as well? Kind of what is the status of um, the turnaround and plans for transportation around Berkshire School? It says nothing's happening. It's just dead. Okay. Well, um, is it right? It should be. The special one that was closing the school, what, two years ago? That was a topic of discussion? Maybe three? Three years ago, yeah. So that could be a topic of discussion two years ago. Okay. Well, there's nothing for this commission to do, I guess, at this point. About but just in terms of the broader piece, staff, in terms of parents who want to advocate, I, I think the stop signs are sort of a feel good thing. And between the warrants not being met, I'm not sure, I, I really don't think they've made that much of that. But I think they want to do a traffic calming application. There's other things potentially on Parsons that could be done to slow the speed of traffic. And that's probably more important. Mm -hmm. It's not getting the cars to come to the full stop, it's getting not the speed by the bus. sense to explore putting a real dead end sign, whether it's a yellow diagonal thing or whatever, on graves. Because I think it is a big problem. We get a lot of trucks and cars that go down there and try to turn around because they just don't know. It doesn't um, it doesn't give them the escape they're looking for on Market Street during during Rush Hour. So I really appreciate your comments. Wouldn't the objective be better just get them from turning on graves at so they have the knowledge beforehand? Yeah, absolutely. I thought we could this out of that end. I'm sorry. By putting one at the end, it is effective. No, it's at the beginning. The current one's at the beginning. Exactly. But it's too small. It's, it's right. Small. It depends what side you're turning from, whether or not you see it. Are you coming in from Bridge Street or are you coming in from off the market? Yep. Yeah. Well, you're both coming out of the market, excuse me. Coming in from but North from, Street. From North Street or from Bridge Street. So, would it make sense to me too? One on either side? What? Is that a difficult thing to do? No. Do we need a coordinates to do it? No. Would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> flashing yellow lights? No, no flashing yellow lights. <laughs> yeah, I think that we were to know that we're going to put this out for them at the beginning, even though they can't interfere the right to put a gate up on private property. They made up my whole lot on that and see if it alleviates the problem. Because if that gate goes up, people are going to drive up and then back down. Well, yeah. right. Speed of light. 
I'm not sure where I'm going to put the snow either. I'm not sure where I'm going to plow the snow to either. Right, well, that's, your yeah. is not much fun. No. She did talk about a motorized gate. I, I don't think she has a price in yet. <laughs> I don't know if that would happen. And then what do you do when it breaks? Because it will break. And the last speaker mentioned some of my financial LT. Yep, so I don't think if you're going to the money, you don't have to have the signs, but the signs up. Let's say, don't do the gay thing. Study for a while and see if it's important. I have no problem putting the two signs for sure and financial assistance. You should be able to swing that. Well, thank you. So, what, what, what is the process? Uh, you get a hold of Rich, or have Alex get a hold of Rich, and you put on a list of things to do. Okay. And it's, you're not opposed to the two sides? Well, I hope we don't make them too big. You want to make them too big? No, I want to make sure I don't make them too big. I don't think you could possibly make them too big. <laughs> Just remember, no skull and bones. <laughs> well, if then clear, yeah, well, there's a problem with this one a lot of Yeah. Right one back and yeah. a lot of people try to look for parking to go to Joe's or whatever. Yeah. Or to the Roost and all these other places that open up to get the managers and all the parking. Yeah. Right, then there's additional parking challenges for the ribs as well. Separate conversation. Okay. Well, thank you. Anything else on this one? Okay. This is the last one. Um, and it's simply that I have a constituent who said why don't why don't you Ryan write the GPS companies and, and tell them to tell the commercial trucks that they rely on their services to stop going out in residential streets? And the response I gave is in the past, the police department has been correspondence with them, and maybe the city has in, in other ways. Um, so I wanted to raise it here. It seems like all the relevant people are here. Um, is it is it necessary, appropriate at this time to? talk about sending in a letter or getting in touch with the GPS companies to correct the maps. I, I wish Devin was here because she yeah. put this up at the NHGSA mm -hmm. contacts. Um, so we're considering doing it again just as an act of citizenry that this should be on the street level, so you should explore the contracts. Okay, that makes sense. When it happened, it often there's a scheme of Coke listing their delivery addresses to industrial drive. So the GPS would fool people and they'd think it, they, they type into it as a drive and get to the other thing. Yeah. And that didn't reduce that as a significant effect? Uh, the reports about the trucks in the neighborhoods are greater than what my people observe, but I can't downplay the fact that people say their trucks are all the time. But our observations are very different. So, you know, they say trucks leave the coke plant and take a left and go. They have to get to Route 9. You can't. They built the curbing. There is no way the 60 foot trailer can exit the plant unless they go all the way to the circle and come back. Right, exactly. exactly. Which is rarely done. The biggest solution to that is the traffic right at the end of the Western Road when we finish that project. Which is coming. Yeah. That's going to help. The number of nearest strike bridges and you know, the trucks that are stuck there. Well, so unless there's any other discussion on this, um, we I think should move this to when as you suggest Devin is here. If you can chat with Devin, never get hold of me. I would say you have to do it again. Let's do it that way. I'll talk to Devin. Okay. Great. Uh, any new business? Monday. Um, tomorrow night is the last uh, public meeting per se of Bosky Park, you know, the senior center from six to eight. One of the questions that come out of this is talking to the city engineer today, Jim Morillo, is the crosswalk on New South Street. Uh, they're at a point where they need to come up with concept designs of pedestrian circulation in Pulaski Park and how that impacts New South Street and whether or not that crosswalk is part of it. Um, I did speak with the mayor about it today. Um, I, I have concerns about that crosswalk going forward also, especially with Nelson and I redesigning the Main Street intersection having safer pedestrian access at some point in the somewhat near future. But um, not right now it's kind of critical to design a plastic park as to how the internal movements of pedestrians and traffic work and how they exit into the adjoining side streets, Main Street and New South Street, on how to park the lot. 
So with that, I'm looking for some direction or perhaps a vote from the Transportation Parking Commission about that mid-block crossing and whether or not that should remain into the future. Are you looking for that today? No. Right. It wasn't on the, the agenda. Right. I'm sure some people are passionate about it and probably some people aren't. That way it should be on the next agenda for a discussion. Great. Good idea, and it will be. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Should we discuss whether we're going to cancel the July or August meeting? Or going to be through the summer? What's your pleasure? I can always fill these things up. It's August. It's August. It'll work better for me, that's what I'm asking. Is there a motion? No, just out of getting a feel. We have enough for the July agenda. Okay. If someone's plan that the next one would be September. Feel free to make a motion. I'm like David. I'm not here in July. I can't be here for August. No what we do on the same. I'm happy to say you can sign up for it. I mean, we often have less than a full complement in this in this commission. So I mean individuals can certainly skip. So what what's your pleasure, Mr. Murray? Board of Health. <coughs> the Board of Health routinely skips the July meeting. Sounds like it's hit or miss. Yeah. So it'd be fair to say plan for July, but make sure you respond whether you're able to attend so we can make sure we have a quorum. Okay. I think maybe everyone just email me what with, with, with their preference is. We have a date for the August meeting. Yeah. It's going to be like the 18th or the 19th or something. Yeah, it'll be the 19th. It'll be the 19th? Yeah. 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 Let's take a straw poll. How many people know they will be gone during July or August? Sure. Who's going to be gone in July? Yeah. This thing that is such a complex <laughs> social calendar. <laughs> I don't. That <laughs> is That finger is getting around this thing. We're also doing a Devin, you know. So I also find this thing. Says I'll be here. in July. God willing. Who's going to not be here in uh, August? Three people. Are you here, Phil? Yes. No. Well, I could be. Two people not here in August. So different people just don't come to me. All right. Well, that would be fine. Unless someone wants to make a motion to cancel. Let's just proceed. Okay. <coughs> That's what it says, right? Ask people who are actually paid to me to see if they create a form. Okay. That, yeah, that's right. I was kind of worried we didn't have it. Sounds good. Motion to adjourn? Second. Thank you, everyone. Second that. Yeah. All in favor? <coughs>